Um, as you may know, some of you may know, I've decided to start reading books again as a way of linking people around the world who are missing loved ones, feeling isolated, needing something to bring us a smile. Um, so I've decided to read children's books and adults books and this it's an adult book mainly, but I'm sure some children will enjoy the stories. And it's full of all these different little small stories that hopefully can bring uh, 101 stories to open the hearth and rekindle the spirit. So they're just short stories that can hopefully cheer people up. Um, I've just chosen this one, it's called 200th Hug. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Love cures people, both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. Dr. Carl Memminger. My father's skin was jaundiced as he lay hooked up to monitors and intravenous tubes in the intensive care unit in the hospital. Normally a well-built man, he had lost more than 30 pounds. My father's illness had been diagnosed as cancer of the pancreas, one of the most malignant forms of the disease. The doctors were doing what they could, but told us he only had three to six months to live. Cancer of the pancreas does not lend itself to radiation therapy or chemotherapy, so they could offer little hope. A few days later, when my father was sitting up in bed, I approached him and said, Dad, I feel deeply for what's happening to you. It's helped me look at the ways I've kept myself distant and feel how much re I really love you. I leaned over to give him a hug, but his shoulders and arms became tense. Come on, Dad, I really want to give you a hug. For a moment he looked shocked. Showing affection was not our usual way of relating. I asked him to sit up some more so I could get my arms around him. Then I tried again. This time, however, he was even more tense. I could feel the old resentment starting to build up and I began to think, I don't need this. If you want to die and leave me with the same coldness as always, go right ahead. For years I'd been I'd I'd used every instance of my father's resistance and rigidness to blame him, to resent him and say to myself, see, he doesn't care. This time, however, I fought again and realised the hug was for my benefit as well as my father's. I wanted to express how much I cared for him, no matter how hard it was for him to let me in. My father had always been very Germanic and duty-oriented. In his childhood, his parents must have taught him how to shut off his feelings in order to be a man. Letting go of my long-held desire to blame him for our distance, I was actually looking forward to the challenge of giving him more love. I said, come on, Dad, put your arms around me. I leaned up close to him at the edge of the bed with his arms around me. Now squeeze. That's it. Now squeeze again. Very good. In a sense, I was showing my father how to hug. And as he squeezed, something happened. For an instant, a feeling of, I love you, bubbled through. For years our greeting had been a cold and formal handshake that said, Hello, how are you? Now, both he and I waited for that momentary closeness to happen again. Yet just at the moment when he would begin to enjoy the feeling of love, something would tighten in his upper torso and our hug would become awkward and strange. It took months before his rigidness gave way, 
and he was able to let the emotions inside him pass through his arms to encircle me. It was up to me to be the source of many hugs before my father initiated a hug on his own. I was not blaming him, but supporting him. After all, he was changing the habits of an entire lifetime, and that takes time. I knew we were succeeding because more and more we were relating out our care and affection. After the 200th hug, he spontaneously said out loud for the first time I could ever recall, I love you. That's the end. Is the story written by Harold H. Boomfield. I was just going to go to bed and I thought I'd read one of these stories and then I thought, oh, it's so beautiful, I just want to share it with you all. So uh, <laughs> I turned on the recorder to record it for you. So I hope wherever you are, whatever's going on, that you're not feeling too isolated and you remember we're all in it together we're all connected join me for the next story take care bye for now